In the Gaza Strip, the Hamas government has asked Egypt to drop restrictions on the Rafah border crossing, just days after the checkpoint opened last week. In a major policy shift, Egypt's transition government had unsealed the Rafah border after years of closure under ousted Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak. But less than a week later, Egypt imposed a cap of 400 people per day, turning back busloads of people who had been cleared for passage. On Saturday, the border was sealed completely, causing angry Palestinians to storm the gates in protest. Well, Democracy Now!'s Sharif Abdel Kudus and Nicole Salazar are in the Gaza Strip and were one of the few teams of foreign journalists to witness the scene at the Rafah border. They filed this report. Outrage in Gaza. Palestinians trying to leave through the Rafah border crossing with Egypt find that they are still trapped inside the strip. Last week, the Egyptian government announced it had permanently reopened the Rafah crossing, Gaza's only border not controlled by Israel. The announcement was welcomed by Gazans, who have been living under a severe blockade imposed by Israel for the last five years. The Mubarak government cooperated with the siege by tightly restricting movement through Rafah. Three months after Mubarak's ouster, the post-revolutionary government in Egypt said it had permanently reopened the crossing. But the reality on the ground tells a very different story. The Egyptians told us the crossing is open and that they're letting in elderly people and women. They haven't let in anything. I'm going to have surgery that I myself am paying for. For three days, I've been coming to this crossing for no reason. For the past few days, hundreds of Palestinians have traveled from across Gaza to the Rafah border crossing, hoping to enter Egypt, only to be turned away. <laughs> As you can see, we come and we try. This one is closed, this one is open. The one gate we have is the Egyptian gate. We appeal to Supreme Council of the Armed Forces under the leadership of Field Marshal Tantawi to open the crossing and ease the Palestinian situation. Would-be travelers had many reasons for wanting to leave Gaza. The sick seeking medical treatment, students studying overseas, family members trying to reunite with loved ones. To many of them, the border opening was an empty promise, and their anger is palpable. Every day we came and they just they say the, the borders are closed. And we are asking why they are closed. You know, we heard in the news that uh, Egyptian borders are open. So where is the question? What's the problem? I, I want someone to answer me what's the problem. Gazans are left to wonder why the Egyptian government pledged to ease restrictions on travel and then not follow through. The Rafah crossing has been the only place for many Palestinians getting in and out of the Gaza Strip. Mohammed Omar is an award-winning Palestinian journalist based in Rafah. I think Egypt is under international pressure from the United States and Israel to shut the border um, once again and to make restrictions on the Palestinians. There are more than 1.5 million Palestinians living in Gaza, a 25-mile long strip of land in one of the most densely populated areas on earth. Israel tightened its blockade on the territory in 2007 after Hamas was elected to power and subsequently seized control of the territory. Ghazi Hamad is the deputy minister of foreign affairs for Hamas. You know, the only passage for Gaza is, is uh, uh, Rafah crossings. And we still, we still have restrictions and limits on these crossings. But the other borders in the east and west and the north, it is controlled by the Israeli occupation. So it's not easy for the Palestinians to move freely uh, because there is some, some, some political interest, either from the United States, from Israel, from other countries, try to put more hard conditions in Gaza and to continue the policy of blockade and siege and collective uh, sanction against, against people. This. So uh, they feel that they are still living in a bigger prison. And in spite that there's some uh, movement in and out, but uh, we feel that we, we have a taste of a prison still in Gaza. The Israeli-imposed blockade and tight restrictions on freedom of travel in and out of Gaza 
mean that many Palestinians have never left the territory. There is a psychological impact that you feel, everybody feels trapped in a way inside the Gaza prison, which is true. In a way you have here, we are on the beach of Rafah, you have the Israeli Navy, or you can see it, the Israeli Navy warships over there. And uh, in the north, you see that the Israeli border is sealed. There is no one who can get out. The east, there is Israeli border. And the south, there is the Egyptian border. So everybody feels trapped inside the Gaza Strip, particularly those young men between the age of 18 to 40 who are not allowed to get outside without security coordination. Egypt called it visa, but I don't call it a visa. In fact, it's called security coordination, and it takes a long time for you as a young man to get outside of the Gaza Strip. I tried many times to leave. Like I had, uh, I got admission from different universities, like in Canada and the U.S. I just can't leave because I was denied entry, like from both sides, the Egyptian and the Israeli. Nader al khuzandar is a 23-year-old university graduate. Like many Palestinian men his age, he has been unable to leave Gaza his entire life. They just deny entry and they don't give any clear reason. Like you just, sorry, we we can't let you in. Go back to your home. I tried for the past six years. I'm still trying. Like I'm waiting admission from the university in the UK, and I hope that I will be granted entry, so I can at least like for once maybe see the other world, see the other side of the border, and see uh, the outer world. In many ways, you see some of the youth really having hard times, and what is the option for them? They feel isolated. Some of them, they doubt, if they, they doubt if there is a world even outside the Rafah crossing. When you talk to them and they say, is there really a world outside the Rafah crossing? Maybe it's all fake, what we see on television. But you know, when you tell them that there is indeed world and there are people who are supporting Palestine and there are people who are supporting peace and justice in the region, they doubt it because they don't see it. The Egyptian government's decision to reopen the border crossing on a permanent basis was hailed by many as the first concrete step in reversing years of Mubarak era policies towards the Palestinians and Egypt's complicity in the siege. Nagam Mohanna is a journalist and filmmaker. We were with Egyptian in their uh, revolution. Everybody, you, you can see that the TV channel on, only on, on Jazeera or Al Arabiya following what is happening in Egypt for weeks. We didn't turn the channel. Uh, we were so happy when we heard that they succeed in the revolution because we said that we will have some effect on our uh, society, in our place in Gaza. Salam Abaraka is the director of the Borders and Crossings Police in Gaza. He said that just a few days after Egyptian authorities reopened the border, they began severely restricting travel for Palestinians. For instance, they said that the technical staff at the Egyptian crossing was not prepared to receive this number of travelers, who were no more than 400. This is obviously an unreasonable answer. Rafah is an international crossing point that has facilitated the movement of thousands of travelers for years without any problems. Day after day, hundreds of Palestinians travel to the border in the anticipation that they might be able to get out. But as the week progressed, the situation only got worse. Fewer Palestinians were being let through. The approval process was vague, and there was little communication. This culminated on Saturday when Egyptian authorities suddenly closed the border without warning. Ayyub Abushar, the director of the Rafah crossing from the Palestinian side, made repeated phone calls to his Egyptian counterparts to find out what was happening, but he received no response. We tried to reach the Egyptian side, but until now, they have not responded to us at all. We haven't been informed of any decision from the Egyptians about today or tomorrow, or about specific hours.
nothing. The closing is a complete surprise. The circumstances of the closing are a complete surprise. We weren't expecting it at all. I don't know why this step was taken by the Egyptian side, even more so because we were not informed of this decision. With the border closed and no word on why or when it would open, tensions quickly escalated. Dozens of men, women and children gathered at a large metal gate in the no man's land between Egypt and Gaza. A dramatic scene unfolded as they banged on the gate, shouting to be let across. The crowd swelled and people began to push heavily on the large metal doors until they finally broke open. Egyptian soldiers armed with assault rifles, electric batons and shields lined up to guard the border. A large wooden scaffolding had been constructed over the main gate. Egyptian authorities claimed they needed to renovate the crossing. Palestinian protesters shouted and chanted at the soldiers to let them through. Journalist Mohammed Omar describes the scene. He's screaming that in this ambulance, this is a child who's 12 years old, opened the crossing. I can't watch my son die in front of my eyes, he just said. He's trying to convince the Egyptian officers, but unfortunately, the Egyptian officers seem to be having the high command um, uh, officials who said that the crossing should be closed immediately. <laughs> We are in no man's land, basically. This is the Egyptian gate. This is the Palestinian gate. Palestinians are traveling that side. They are not allowed to travel today. They say, we prefer to die, but not to be humiliated by our brothers and sisters in Egypt. People are chanting. Everybody here wanted to leave uh, to Egypt since Egypt announced the opening of the crossing. Going through those people, you find many of those people who are really desperate to leave for the first time when they heard that Egypt has opened the border since the siege was established in 2006. Everybody is saying that, hey, there is an agreement on the ground. We have legitimacy from the youth of the Tahrir Square. We are all one hand. We coordinate with each other and break the siege in Gaza. Unfortunately, the officers are telling them that we have instructions to keep this crossing closed for the time being. The protesters were eventually escorted back by Palestinian security and the border remained sealed. There was no word on when it would open again and people were left not knowing when they could leave. The next day, hundreds of Palestinians again made their way to the Rafah crossing. The border gates were closed, but this time from the Palestinian side. Frustration and anger mounted. I want someone to tell me why it is closed. Why the media, if the media is telling lies, where is the truth? Yeah, I want to know where is the truth, and if it is closed or open, I want to know. We are as a citizen, Palestinian citizen, we need to speak with someone. But no, nobody is answering, the, everyone is blaming the other side. The Egyptians had opened their side of the border, but Hamas announced it would keep the Palestinian side closed until the Egyptian government relaxed entry restrictions and allowed more Palestinians in per day. Torn between the two sides, the people of Gaza are left trapped with no way out. It's, it's our right to live in dignity. It's not a problem of business or, or uh, national interests or commerce. It's an issue of dignity. And for that we fight every day against the Egyptians, against the Israelis and against our people here on the gate. For Democracy Now! I'm Sharif Abdul Kudus with Nicole Salazar in the Gaza Strip.